What's up guys, Luke here, and as you may be able to read in front of you, I'm going to be doing a quick mod review of the Open Computers mod. This is a mod that is um, available for Minecraft 1.7.1. There is a slightly different version also available for 1.6.4, but that version of Minecraft is becoming irrelevant now, slowly but surely. And so, this one seems more appropriate. Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail but basically this adds in a whole load of programmable computers as can be seen by this bit of code here. Um, there are three basic tiers. You get the tier 1 system like this. So you've got a tier 1 case which can take various tier 1 components and it can take this number of components. So you've got hard drives, processors, memory, uh, various add-on cards like graphics cards and network cards so there's an on-off button there then you've got a tier 1 sc screen and then I've stuck a keyboard on the side so I can actually interact with it for a tier 1 and a tier 2 system to actually start using the things unless you've already set up the hard drive you need to use a floppy drive so this is the tier 2 system and again you can see the screen is a bit bigger so you've also got slightly more in the way of expansion slots and you've got tier 2 components so you hit it's not the most authentic hard drive noise in the world but as you can see you've got an op I've installed the open OS from the floppies available and if I this uses the Lua programming language I think it's like Lua 5.3 uh, for more accurate details, I suggest you go and check the link in the description. So as you can see, this screen is color, and I've got a couple of things. You've got all the various directories in there. It's a bit like a Linux setup of sorts. And then, for last but not least, we have the tier 3 system, which obviously takes the more advanced stuff. Now this has got a built-in floppy drive which makes it look a lot neater, although unfortunately the keyboard is still the same colour as the system. And as you can see, you have a much bigger screen here, and obviously there's more memory and everything. Now this mod is designed to interact with various forms of power, like I think Industrial Craft 2 and Red Power for example, and so when those are installed, then you actually need to power these systems, but I don't have those installed, and this is just a lot easier. So, there are more than just these basic computer bits. As you can see, there's all these big parts, some of which are for the computers and some which aren't. So, as you can see, left menu is actually referring to left alt on um, a PC. So, you can see how much they cost, and you'll note that they are generally quite expensive. This is deliberate. Um, because the mod maker felt that the similar, I think it's Computer Craft or something like that, which is a very similar mod, um, that was too cheap, so he wanted to make this more suitable for more hardcore packs. So these are seriously expensive things. I mean, 19 redstone is not always easy to get hold of, nor is 12 gold ingots and 9 never quartz. Quite complicated crafting recipes. I'm not sure necessarily how these are made. You'll have to go and check in the forums for exactly how this is done. But if you, I hold down left shift, you can see the descriptions for everything. So you can build servers, um, remote using server racks and remote terminals, which you'll see a remote terminal over there, I think. The ro you can build robots. Um, obviously, the various bits and pieces. For um, the regular computers I'm showing you, and then you get items like redstone controllers, chargers to the robots, a customizable computer case, which I haven't really dabbled with. You've got access points and switches to, for, for connecting networks. You've got adapt you can use adapters to control vanilla blocks and things like that. Capacitors for energy storage. Uh, disassembler disk drive which you've seen, geolyzer so you can analyze the 
air, surrounding area. That could be interesting. Motion sensors and power distributors and all that sort of thing. Again, I'll let you go and check out more careful, detailed things because otherwise we'll be here until next week. Now, there are a bunch of um, floppy disks that are present in the creative menu, but the most, most simple ones are obviously generic floppy disks like that and the open OS disk, which both of these you can craft in survival, um, which is kind of quite useful when you consider that you require the operating system for these systems to actually work, otherwise they will just fall over and give you an error code. There are all these add-on components, although it looks like I've taken one out and forgotten to replace it possibly. So you get processors, which are vital for the computers to work, as are the memory. Everything else is optional, unless of course you're running a server. So you can upgrade the servers, these go into server racks, you get holographic projectors so don't know how those work I'm gonna try that yeah cabling for connecting blocks obviously and there's a keyboard interestingly you can't seem to make that I don't know if it comes with something else or not and there's various tiers of memory and you can see different capacities now those are actually relevant because that's how much how big your program can actually be if you go outside those memory limits your program will crash so you can have, I think it's basically up to 2 meg of RAM. And you can have various hard drives, so 1 meg, 2 meg, 4 meg hard drive. And sort of internet cards, and then sort of network cards, and all sorts of different bits and pieces, and then graphics cards. I'm not sure if these are vital or not, to be perfectly honest. I haven't really tried without one. I will go and do so shortly. So. Those component you can build those components from these various bits and pieces. So microchips, from arithmetic logic units, basic cards, control units, the keys to the keyboard, disc platters, transistors, the interweb, which you use it um, with internet card, uh, iron nugget, um, printed circuit boards, and raw circuit boards. And then there's all of these different upgrades generally used for robots uh, you can do all sorts of different things so you can make them carry more you can make them have bigger batteries generate more or get game more experience make them more efficient or various bits and pieces and it's getting dark so let's just go back to time set zero let's see what the holographic thingy does then it's tier two so let's go and link it up to this whoops not put into that. Uh, does this do anything? I don't think so. Hmm. What happens if we do this? That's not going to help, is it? Put it up here. There. Well, apparently I can't actually build it there. I don't know what that does. Again, you'll have to look it up in the forums for that, I think. Oh well. Well, let's go back here. So, probably best to go and use the bigger screen, so it's most obvious to you what I'm actually able to do. So, if I type in edit hello everyone dot or hello every dot lua, you'll see I'm now able to start writing code. So, if I just type the generic programming thing that everyone who's ever programmed knows, if we do that. That can save. Thrust it to the hard drive. So if I now type dir, you will now see that hello every dot lua is on the screen there. So if I run it, it will now print hello world. And you can do far more complicated things with these systems than I have done, but they are generally beyond me. So there's lots of tutorials in the thread. There's a lot of information out there on this mod. And I would strongly recommend you go and check this out. It's quite a neat little thing. Uh, the idea that you can have robots and things, which would be way too complicated for me. Sounds quite neat. So yeah, uh, let's see what... I know what I was going to do. I was going to try and take a graphics card out of a computer and see what happens. Yep, I suspected it doesn't, you can't see anything on the screen. 
that's that's I don't think you should really be able to do that. Hot swappable components like that, mm, probably not a good idea. Hmm. So let's go into restart. Ah, is it reboot? I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, reboot restarts the system. Now we're back at the top. Now what happens if I take a stick of memory out? That's interesting. I do have to reboot it for it to update, and now it's obviously changed. But it probably shouldn't let me do that, because if I try and do that in a real computer, I will either break it severely, or I will electrocute myself, if not both. So although hot swappable hard drives are probably a good idea, yep. Too many, too many components connected to the computer. Well, I guess that's what happens when you pull the um, CPU out. Now, one interesting thing is that these computers will remain in the same state until you turn them on and off. Although, when you turn them off, you have to make sure you saved everything, or like a real computer, you'll lose all your information. Hard drives are not compulsory because, as you can see here, there is this temp directory. And you can use this um, to store things in if you don't have a hard drive installed. So, yeah, I would recommend you go out and look at this mod in far more detail. I don't have time or the capability to review absolutely everything. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And of course, go and check the mod out in the description. So I hope to see you here in the very near future, hopefully doing more Minecraft videos where audio issues don't strike. So yeah, have a good day folks, and I will hopefully see you back here very shortly. And yeah, breaking the monitors does strange things like that. But we'll let this have the... Final word, print goodbye, shut down, okay, and now, goodbye, dog, <laughs> didn't like me trying to shut down through that, oh well, anyway, see you next time folks.